All right. Well, first of all, if you don't already know me, I'm Evan Kosliner, and I'm a senior here at Wellington. And I'm actually doing a project uh, for my senior focus class that I'm enrolled in. Uh, what that is, is um, it's a class you can enroll in, and you can um, pick a topic of your choosing and kind of delve into that as uh, deeply as you want. What I chose was um, digital technology, and I don't think anyone would disagree with me if I told them that digital technology was probably one of the defining features of our generation. I coined this term I like to call simple technology, and um, what that is is when a product or service like, I don't know, your, your iPhone, Facebook, or this nifty thermostat they have called uh, Nest, it's like this great touchscreen thing that's t selling really well right now, um, when it enters the market and there's already an incumbent in the market that has all the same features and all the same abilities but um, is totally disrupted by this new piece of technology. Um, one of the questions I would get most often when I would tell people about my project um, was whether or not all this simple technology was making us stupid. And that's kind of what I wanted to come, in a, come here and address. So is the advance of things like Facebook and um, the replacement of things like MySpace that are slightly more complicated, you know, is that, um, is that making us dumb? And um, let me tell you why I don't really think so. First of all, the first impression most of you have when you think futuristic, simple technology, and the humans that result from that is uh, probably this. Yeah. Um, how many of you have seen WALL-E? Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you haven't, the, the plot in general is that simple technology gets to the point where we as humans are simple as well. Um, we get really lazy, we turn into these fat, gluttonous behemoth sort of things, and we leave these cute little robots over here to do all the cleaning up for us on our planet while we're in some starship somewhere. Now, whether or not this would actually happen was the thing I wanted to address with this talk. And I don't think it will. I think there are two reasons why we think it will, however. And both are misconceptions. Number one is that I think that technology right now is maybe a little bit too generalized. And number two is that I don't think that it'll block our creativity in the future, even if it might have some distortion right now. Now, what I mean by it being too generalized is that there's a common argument, and it's technology X makes you stupid. And it's most commonly referenced with entertainment technology. Um, the previous generation saw that with television. Te television's making you stupid, television's rotting your brain, whatever else. You, you, hear, heard, you heard it all the time. Then I feel like the argument progressed into video games. Video games are making you stupid. Video games are rotting your brain. Now we have Facebook, social network, social networking, whatever. The argument continues. But it's the exact same argument. But no one's really stepped back and said, is it really making you as dumb as television? So I don't think it is. I think that there's a lot more intellectual stimulation that comes from things like Facebook, even if, of course, it isn't math, um, than television, for instance, because television is completely passive. So with things like Facebook, you, you interact with them. You type. You, sometimes you even get in an argument. You have to make logical conclusions based upon what you think. You use your critical thinking skills and you talk, which, is, which requires a lot more thought than things like television. And at the same time, though, the argument's been carried on to Facebook. And no one stepped back to say, maybe things are progressing in a different direction than we think they are. Number two is that it blocks our creativity. The person that introduced me to this idea, actually, was a friend of, mine's fa friend of mine's father, Mr. Mersill, or Michael Mersill. He's the chair of art, the art graduate program at OSU right now. Sorry if I messed that up or something. But what he did is he walked me into these two cars, and 
The first car, yeah, I only knew two things about the cars. Um, their ethnicity, I guess I would say, whether one was Japanese, the other was German, and two, what he wanted me to do with the car. And so he walks me into the first car, which is a German car, and he says, switch the CD on it to play a different song. And I say, all right. Um, and after 15 minutes of failure, I get to the point where I actually do turn the CD. And along the way, I've also turned on the windshield wipers, honked the horn, and several other, other things. But then he walks me into the Japanese car, and he says, do the same thing. It takes me maybe two minutes after I'm adjusted to the different seating, and the entire car looks like a block of tofu, and uh, so does the user interface on the, on the thing. And though it took me less time, he brings me back to the house, and he says, well, what did you learn from the German car? And I said, well, now I know everything that it does, right? I mean, because I messed up so many times trying to use it that I have a general feeling for every sing single individual component that's in it, whereas the Japanese car, I had what I wanted instantly. Um, this is similar to... Yeah, well, maybe it's not similar to anything. All right. No, it's similar to search engines like Google. You get what you want instantly. Whether it's a keyword, a search phrase, anything. Control F, you have what you want instantly. Now, the disadvantage of that and what he brought to my attention was that you don't get that serendipity moment. And what he told me was that's pretty much the crux of creativity. He compared it to walking through a library. Say there's some book you want on, I don't know, simple technology. And along the way, you find um, the dinosaur flipping book, or whatever, you know? And the dinosaur flipping book, you, you look at it and you're like, oh my goodness, wow, that's a great book. I have a great idea now. But the process was random. You can't get that random process and that random creativity or discovery from things like Google yet. But Keyword being yet. I think that as AI progresses, artificial intelligence, that you start to get to the point where technology can replicate that serendipity moment, that randomness that comes with creativity that's uh, so beautiful to us. And I think you're already seeing it. I don't know how many of you bought anything on Amazon or anything like that, but it'll already give you suggestions, highlights, things that it thinks you might like based upon what you've already been looking at. It's becoming smarter and smarter. And I think it'll get to the point where in the future you don't see, technology isn't this one in one out thing where you search for something and you get exactly what you want, but you have an option. You can either search for exactly what you want and get that, or you can explore. And I think that as artificial intelligence, for instance, advances, you get that option to explore, kind of sift through, to kind of sift through information to get a creative idea. Because as anyone who's studied computer science knows, you can't make the computer be creative for you. You still have to be creative for yourself. Whether it's um, designing something on the computer and printing it with a 3D printer or um, writing a program. You still can't make the computer do it for you. But I think that as we progress, we can have it be more of an asset than something like the Japanese car where I only get what I want and I can't discover anything else. So as a result, I don't think we see a future like the people in WALL-E. I think that we see a future where people are smarter and their creativity is even augmented by technology because you have the option to do this creative search with it. In addition to the binary search you're getting with things like Google right now. And I hope you see the future the same way I do. Thanks. <laughs>